Chiropractic Standard Spinal Subluxation Assessment. Here we see images of commonly depicted images of spinal subluxations that are found in doctors of chiropractic office. We'll find that these images display that a spinal subluxation is a misalignment of the vertebra, which causes nerve interference or nerve pressure on the nerve. Now, defining spinal subluxation, then showing the most standard way to accurately and reliably assess spinal subluxations is what this video is all about. So, the science of chiropractic deals with the relationship between the articulations of the skeleton and the nervous system and the role of this relationship in the restoration and maintenance of health. A primary concern to chiropractic and are the abnormalities of structure or function of the vertebral column known clinically as a vertebral subluxation complex. That's from the International Chiropractic Association, 2012. It is the consensus of that panel that the original definition of subluxation derived from the Palmers was a bone out of place that has lost its normal juxtaposition causing nerve interference is what clinicians, chiropractic clinicians have used daily for approximately 100 years. And it is the most accurate definition there is. It's a spinal misalignment that causes nerve interference of some kind, an identifiable nerve interference pattern. So spinal misalignment alone is not a vertebral subluxation complex. It's a part of it, but it's not clinically expressive. So you could have spinal misalignments that are not clinically expressive, that technically are not vertebral subluxation complexes. So let's take a look at the misalignment patterns though that were put forth in 1972 for the Medicare listings of the different types of spinal misalignments that can cause spinal subluxation that would be under the scope of chiropractic care. These subluxations were static intersegmental subluxations and you see them listed here flexion malposition, extension malposition, lateral flexion malposition, you can read them. You also had Kinetic intersegmental subluxations, which is a hypomobility, commonly understood as a fixation, but we also had hypermobilities and aberrant motion sub kinetic intersegmental subluxations as well. We had sectional subluxations, we had alterations of curves, we had decompression of adaptional curves, abnormalities in motion, paravertebral subluxations, costovertebral, coaster transverse sacroiliac subluxations. So we had these subluxations. Now we have three main ways that we determine spinal subluxations and what we've always said is we need to stay in order to improve the clinical healthcare science of chiropractic we need to stay as objective as possible. We need to stay with that which can readily be measured as opposed to that which is highly subjective. But we have a thing called a part exam. A part exam to demonstrate a subluxation based on physical examination, two of the four criteria mentioned below are required. One of which must be asymmetry misalignment or range of motion abnormality. Now, we know that a part exam is highly subjective and not, um, you know, it, it doesn't do well as far as being uh, with high inter or in, intra or inter practitioner reliability. Now we also have the ICA management at whiplash associated disorders from the ICA of California tell us that we can have vertebral position assessed radiographically which traditionally that's our techniques. Different techniques have different means by which they've determined spinal subluxations on x-rays. The problem with these techniques, and it's not a problem with the technique itself, the techniques are great, but the problem with the technique is that they're not interrelatable. So a Gonstead examination procedure comes up with different subluxation patterns than say an Atlas orthogonal procedure or a Blair procedure or a CBP procedure. So these procedures have, all have different means or methods by which they calculate or assess spinal subluxations based on technique. That's very confusing to the outside world because it looks like it's kind of helter-skelter as far as how do you determine or how do you assess a spinal subluxation. Now, the ICA also said you could have abnormal segmental motion assessed radiography. 
Now, that's probably the most accurate, most reliable, most repeatable way to actually do a subluxation assessment, a spinal misalignment assessment. Um, you do an intersegmental motion study by taking flexion extension x-rays, loading those x-rays into a computer system that allows the radiologist to uh, make measurements of the intersegmental motion patterns. Those intersegmental motion patterns then give a readout, just like an EKG. It's very objective, and it's been shown to be the most accurate and reliable way to determine spinal misalignment. Now, we said spinal subluxation is spinal misalignment and then a clinical verification examination procedure to verify the specific level. So what that would look like is any level where you have abnormal intersegmental motion, if you had a pain problem at that level, if you had an identified sensory problem at that level, or if you had an identified motor problem at that level, you would have a vertebral subluxation complex. So the most accurate standard way to do a spinal subluxation assessment would be to do flexion extension studies and a computerized radiographic mensuration analysis to get your intersegmental output. That you then would correlate clinically with motor sensory or a pain pattern problem associated at that level.